Uh, Madam Chairwoman, uh, once again, uh, again, I, I commend you for uh, the, and thank you for this hearing. Um, and uh, we agree. Uh, we agree on, on, on not only the basics, but I think even on most of the details. Uh, uh, I may be a little, a little repetitive, but I think it, it bears repeating. Um, basically, what, what you've just said, um, again, as you just said, Madam Chairman, that, that this program for families displaced by Katrina and Rita uh, ended the 1st of May, and, and those who remain in temporary housing are expected to either vacate their trailers or hotel rooms uh, by the end of this month. Now, as you mentioned, it was 143,000 individuals after Katrina and Rita um, uh, who uh, were provided temporary housing. Uh, and again, now we're four, almost four years later, and uh, there's still over 5,000 remaining. And obviously the Stafford Act, uh, as you also stated, uh, authorizes FEMA temporary housing programs um, up to eight, 18 months of housing, which can be extended, uh, as has been done uh, by the President, by the presidents, obviously under ex special circumstances. Now in this case, um, the housing program was extended uh, for more than two years be beyond the 18-month limit. So obviously it's an important issue. and. Uh, how FEMA decided and decides when housing responsibilities end is an appropriate issue to address. And that's why, again, Madam Chairwoman, I want to thank you uh, for this hearing. You know, we're now curr we're, we're currently facing uh, an ugly decision, either extending the temporary program indefinitely, I guess, uh, or discontinuing the program for 5,000 people. And obviously, neither one of those options uh, uh, is attractive. Uh, 44 months now, families and individuals have lived in travel ta trailers or hotel rooms and, and, and obviously never intended for long-term use. And, but even after all this time, there seems to be no other solution that has been developed. And, uh, you know, there, there has not been a real viable solution uh, developed and implemented by the state and local governments to address the long-term affordable housing needs for low-income residents. Um, and in fact, as discovered during a staff trip to New Orleans last fall, some low-income housing units with uh, minimal damage were slated to be torn down. Rental rates were three to four times what they were pre-Katrina, and people who were uh, employed obviously were priced out of available housing markets. And then here we are, uh, months later, on the verge of ending the temporary uh, housing program with, again, no viable, no attractive, no real viable option for these low-income individuals and families. So on top of that, uh, you know, we have still no national recovery strategy as mandated by the Post-Katrina Emergency Management Reform Act uh, of 2006. It seems that instead of improving, we, we may have actually been going backwards. Uh, again, that's, that's at least a perception that I think some of us have. Now, when FEMA was moved into the Department of Homeland Security, its focus obviously shifted, unfortunately, and its capabilities were diminished. And we understand why that shift happened, because terrorism is is something that has to be dealt with, but, but again, we also see, I think, see the consequences. And as, as witnesses testified at the full committee hearing just last week, um, some recovery issues seem to have been neglected in that shift. So as a result, long-term recovery and housing strategies were put, frankly, in the back burner. And today, we're still picking up the pieces and trying to figure out what to do. The Post-Katrina Act required development of a a number of strategies, including including the National Housing Disaster Strategy and a National Recovery Strategy. The National Housing Disaster Strategy was only finalized in January of this year, and a National Recovery Strategy has yet to be done. In addition, um, FEMA's recovery role requires that it be able to plan and coordinate effectively with other federal agencies, as well as with state and local officials. Obviously, without that, uh, it, it cannot function adequately. Working with agencies like HUD uh, proactively in the planning process as opposed to reactively after a major disaster strikes is crucial, obviously, to an effective uh, recovery effort. Now, in the case of Katrina, at a February hearing before the subcommittee, I noted that no real strategy was developed to address the long-term housing issues in Louisiana. That hearing took place just as FEMA's uh, direct housing assistance program and the HUD's disaster housing assistance programs had, been, had just been extended. And as I said, here we are now in May with the same dilemma that we were facing in February. So again, there lies the problem. Earlier this month, the chairwoman held a field hearing in southern Florida uh, to examine preparedness for the 2009 hurricane season. In my remarks at that hearing, I described the scenario of Hurricane Ono 
a hurricane model used um, for catastrophic planning in Florida. And Hurricane Ono uh, is not a weird theoretical thing. It's actually uh, modeled and based on the 1926 Great Miami Hurricane. If such a disaster occurred, the consequences would be devastating. It would require the evacuation of three million people. Again, this is according to uh, the, the simulations. And most of South Florida would be under one to four feet of water for weeks. Homes of 70% of the population would be destroyed. And millions would be without electricity. And that's just obviously among the nightmares that would happen. And there's nothing that says that such a hurricane could not happen this season, next season, or the next season. Um, again, it, it has already happened. Um, we cannot think that Hurricane Katrina is a once-in-a-generation or once-in-a-lifetime disaster, unfortunately. And so we obviously must ensure adequate time and resources are focused on recovery following a disaster and housing. Housing is a huge part of that. Without long-term housing strategies, families that are displaced will find it very difficult to return to their communities. And the communities will not be able to rebuild and, and, <clears throat> and become, begin anew. So we, while we look um, at the continued housing issues in Louisiana and Mississippi today, we should also look forward as to how we can prepare for the next big disaster that we all know, we hope it won't come, but we know that one day it probably will. Again, if Hurricane Ono hits South Florida today, how long will that recovery take? And we know how long past recoveries have taken. Uh, will the same long-term housing issues resurface? Or are there other improvements that have been made? Um, obviously, it's essential that we prepare for the future, but don't forget the lessons learned from past storms like Katrina and others. Uh, again, I look forward to your testimony. I thank you all uh, for your service, and, uh, and I thank you all for uh, being here today.